I've now reviewed every Star Trek film in the franchise, all 13 of them, and it's interesting to specifically focus on the comparisons in quality between the original series films and the Next Generation films. So today we're going to talk about the first 10 films in the franchise. Now, of course, the original series did six films, while the Next Generation cast only did four. So it's not exactly a straightforward comparison. Now, what I will say is that all of these 10 films, I believe that they have their positives. Even the weaker films on the list have some good aspects to them. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, has a great soundtrack and some wonderful heartfelt moments between Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Star Trek Insurrection is paced very well with plenty of action sequences and a few decent moments of humor. Star Trek Nemesis has an excellent battle sequence and a strong relationship between Picard and the villain Shinzon, and I also think that that film has some very good dialogue. But generally speaking, those three films are considered among the weaker ones. Star Trek Generations is another one that really divides people. Uh, I quite like the film, actually. Strong direction, cinematography, musical score, and probably the best opening 10 minutes of any Trek film. Also, the crash landing sequence of the Enterprise D saucer section is just spectacular, although the meeting of Picard and Kirk was disappointing given that it ultimately concluded with Kirk's totally unnecessary and lackluster death. With the exception of Star Trek First Contact, I've been wondering why it was that the TNG films lacked the impact of the original series movies. I've heard it said before that the original series cast were more suited to the big screen than the Next Generation cast, and that may have been true. The original series wasn't extremely popular when it first aired, as its ratings were less than stellar at the time. It only developed a cult following in reruns several years later after its cancellation, whereas The Next Generation was a hugely popular and critically acclaimed series at the time it aired. Moreover, The Next Generation films kicked off shortly after the TV series ended. The series finale, All Good Things, aired in May of 1994, and Star Trek Generations was released in cinemas in November of 1994. By comparison, there had been a 10-year gap between the ending of the original series and the first movie, The Motion Picture. As a result, the Next Generation films probably just felt a bit too close to the TV series, at a time when there was a lot of Star Trek on television. Deep Space Nine was on the air at the same time, for example. The movies perhaps felt like big-budget two-part episodes. This was especially true for Star Trek Insurrection, with plot elements that felt borrowed from some of the TV series episodes, and a story that didn't really feel big enough or imaginative enough to warrant a cinematic outing. Now, you can also get a very different sense of the era that the two film series were made. The original series' six movies were released between 1979 and 1991, and certainly that reflected the energy and style of the movies. Motion picture looks and feels very 70s. It has a very 2001 A Space Odyssey vibe about it, with a bombastic orchestral musical score and a truly epic theatrical quality. Star Treks 2, 3, and 4 contributed to a pantheon of spectacular 80s sci-fi action movies. Star Trek 6 was a solid end to the original series cast on the big screen with The Undiscovered Country allowing the torch to be passed three years later to Picard and co. in 1994's Star Trek Generations. I think this also brings up another, perhaps more controversial point. With the exception of Picard and Data, the Next Generation characters possibly didn't quite have the same charisma as the original series characters. They may have worked brilliantly on television, but that doesn't mean that the formula could necessarily translate quite as well onto the big screen. I think it says quite a lot that of the four TNG films, three of them, Generations, Insurrection, and Nemesis, generally speaking, occupy the latter half of many people's lists when they rank all 13 of the Star Trek films in terms of quality. It's not uncommon for Nemesis or Star Trek V to be at the bottom of the list, and oftentimes Insurrection and Generations are just above that, but most of the original series films are therefore higher up in the rankings. I think it's worth mentioning that the original series only did three seasons, where The Next Generation had done seven. 
The original series was always on the cusp of cancellation when it first aired, and the writing and production team changed during the third season and resulted in its weakest year creatively. The show was never really allowed to become the kind of well-oiled machine that The Next Generation became. By comparison, TNG fully established itself in its third season and continued with consistent quality for the next four years. The showrunners were given the time and indeed budget to enable the show to reach its full potential, but the original series never received the same level of attention and support from the studio. Instead, each year the budget got cut, and in its final season, it was put on the Friday night death slot. TNG's formula, writing and characterization was therefore more suited to television than film because that's where it was established over seven years. I think that Next Generation needed new creative energy when it came to moving to the big screen, rather than sticking mainly with writers from the TV series, though I think Brannon Braga and Ronald D. Moore did very well with First Contact especially. But I think with the original series films, it took a couple of films for the writers and producers to find their feet and discover just how to make Star Trek films. So they were really breaking ground in that respect. But with TNG, because the TV series had been so successful for seven years, I think there was possibly a complacency, an expectation that they just kind of had to show up and produce what were ostensibly TNG episodes with bigger budgets. But there was something lost in the transition from TV to film. TNG worked best on television in a standalone format because they were able to give equal screen time to its ensemble cast over the course of a 26 episode season. But that's not quite so easy to do with a two hour film, obviously. So the TNG films mainly focused on the two most popular characters of Picard and Data, often at the expense of the other characters. Moreover, there was a decision made at the request of Patrick Stewart to make Captain Picard more of an action hero like Captain Kirk. So in First Contact, Insurrection and in Nemesis, he got to carry a phaser, get involved in fights, do the action hero stuff basically. And it just doesn't work because it's not true to the character, Captain Picard being more of a diplomat and a thinker. So those are my thoughts when comparing these two film series. What do you guys think? Where do you think the TNG films went wrong? Or do you disagree with me entirely? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. The Dave Cullen Show is made possible by you, my generous subscribers. If you'd like to support my work, head on over to my subscribe star linked below in the description box, and for a pledge of as little as $1 per month, you can help to keep the show going. I'm also doing one-to-one -one monthly subscriber chats. Thanks again. Take care.